All right, so we need to create our own blog page where we have a index like this on the Ruby on Rails blog that shows each blog post and these are records that are in the database that we need to pull out and display. So first, we're really gonna need that database table in order to build out our routes and our controller and our views for displaying those blog posts. So the first step that we need to do is we need to run a Rails command called Rails Generate. And if you just run this without any arguments, it will show you all the options. Um, and here it shows you some flags you can add. Um, which is kind of handy because the pretend flag can show you what would happen without actually doing anything. And then you have all of these different options for generators. So there's all of these that come from Rails. There's some that come from Active Record and Stimulus and other gems that are dependencies of your app. And the one we care about right now is the model uh, generator. So we can run Rails generate model and we can give it a name um, to represent our database table. So we'll say blog post, and we can call this blog post, uh, that will be our Ruby class name. So we have it, it capitalized, and it will know to underscore that for our database table, which I'll show you in a minute. And then um, we can give this some columns in our database. So every blog post is gonna have a title, uh, which is going to be a string. It's gonna have a body, which will be the text uh, column type, and that's going to contain all of the actual content of the blog post. And uh, eventually we might wanna have different authors and other things, but we'll start here very simply. So what this is gonna do is create a couple files for us. First, it's gonna create a migration. Second is going to create our blog post model to represent that database table that our migration creates. And then it's gonna create a couple test files that we can fill out and write our own automated tests for. Um, and if we look at VS Code, we will see under app models, we now have a blog post.rb file. And this is a Ruby class called blog post, same name as we gave it in that command. And it automatically inherits from application record which uh, is in also inheriting from Active Record Base. So this is what gives your blog post class in Ruby all the functionality that your Active Record um, database models have. So we can use this just by inheriting from application record. We can query the blog post table. We can create new blog posts. We can edit them. We can update them and uh, destroy them. So it's pretty awesome what we get with no code basically in our Rails app. Uh, we just say, hey, there's a blog post table and with this class and that's it. The rest of that functionality is inherited from Rails itself and we didn't have to write any code. So then under DB migrate, this file defines our database change. And our change is to create a table called blog posts. And you'll notice here, this is the underscored version of the blog post class. The classes have to start with a capital letter, so the database tables don't have capital letters, and it converts those capital letters to the underscored version, so every time there's a new capital letter, it puts an underscore before it, so the capital P in posts is uh, underscore and then posts, and then it tells it, we want a string column called title and a text column called the body, and we also want to create it at and update it at timestamps, and Rails will create those for us, and that's a little shortcut for those. So if we run Rails DB colon migrate, this is going to basically run the that migration file and create that new table in our database. Now we can use a tool called Table Plus or another database viewer to open up our database and we just need to select that development.sqlite file that was created with our Rails app. So if we open this and we click connect, this is going to show us the database tables in our application. So this blog post table has an ID that's generated automatically. Every blog post record has a unique ID. Then it has the title column we added, the body column, and then the created at and updated at we can see there from the t.timestamps in our migration. Rails also has a couple um, other things that it creates that we don't need to mess with, but these are managed by Rails. 
We have the active record internal metadata table, which says, hey, you're in the development environment. So if you ever tried to run a command from production or test on your development database, it would let you know that uh, you're probably using the wrong database. And also it keeps track of your migrations that have already run. So this is the timestamp here that you see in that file name that was generated uh, when we ran our migration or generate model, it generated that migration with this timestamp. So when we execute these migrations, like we did right here, the timestamp is referenced and it also will write it to the schema migrations table when it completes successfully. So it knows not to try to recreate the blog post table because it already exists. It would throw an error if you tried to run it twice because it would say, hey, we can't create the table because it already exists. So um, this is handy uh, to use Table Plus to go explore your database when you're learning. And I highly recommend looking at your data in here regularly just to make sure that things are looking correct. Maybe you accidentally let somebody create a blog post without a title. You wanna make sure that you're looking at this stuff and saying, okay, well, we need to make sure we validate titles on our blog posts. You can go in here and correct any data that you might need to. Um, it's just a really handy tool to have. So from here, we can now run the Rails console to actually create our very first blog post. Um, and we can go and say blog post dot all to query the database. And this is gonna generate a SQL query called select blog posts and grab all the columns from the blog post table. And we have nothing in there, so it gave us an empty array back. But we can create a blog post by calling the create method and this all comes from Active Record, and we can give it some keyword arguments, and we can say our title is hello world, and our body column we want to have, um, you know, this is my very first blog post. And if we execute this, you will see that it starts to execute a transaction in our database, um, and it runs this which says insert the new blog post into there with the title that is title hello world with body and it's gonna look that up, create it at will automatically be defined and so we'll update it at as well. And then if that's successful, it will return that object to you in Ruby that represents that record in our database. And then we can verify this if we open up table plus, we can see that there should be a new record in that blog post table. So here we'll open up the blog post table and would you look at that? We have hello world, this is my very first blog post and our timestamps were added as well. And the ID is automatically generated for us so we don't have to do anything with that. But now anytime that we need to look up that blog post we can say blog post find and give it an ID which is the number one which matches the ID here. And if we say give me that ID uh, or the blog post with that ID it will go find that in the database and make sure we only get one record back that has the ID of number one, and it gives us that blog post back. So if we save this to a variable, say blog post, we can then call update on the blog post, which is a function given to us by active record, and this will then be able to update that individual record by itself. So we could say our title is updated title, and this will update that database record to set the title to the updated title string, and it's going to also update the updated at column automatically, and this is only gonna apply to that blog post where the ID is number one. And then it will execute that code in your database, and if we refresh this, we now see updated title on the title attribute. And then lastly, we can say post.destroy to delete it from our database. And this will delete from the blog post table where the blog post ID is number one. It deletes that record. And if we refresh here, it is gone. So we can interact with that database table, query all the blog posts. We can create them, update them, delete them, everything that we really need to do to interact with our database. So now we have our database table created. It's time to start building the routes and the controllers and the views to have our Rails app actually uh, respond to the blog path and uh, display our blog posts that are in our database.